Hey everyone, this is a lecture on variable mass and the objectives of this lecture are to learn about mass flow, um, the general equations governing variable mass and the derivation of these equations from first principles. So um, the first thing that we have to think about is that variable mass is a, subset, a subsection of motion considering particles in motion rather than rigid bodies, where there is a non-constant mass of a body as particles may enter or leave the body depending on the situation. The governing equation required to solve the variable mass questions are, or is I should say, the sum of the forces is equal to the time rate of change in linear momentum. Uh, we must be careful in defining what our linear momentum is represented by at an instant. To make sure that all the changes with respect to time are considered, we must consider the initial linear momentum with initial mass and velocity, as well as the linear momentum at the point in time considered, with the mass and velocity at that time. Uh, this is represented mathematically like so. Uh, Okay, where our linear momentum G is just a mass times velocity at an instant plus the initial mass multiplied by initial velocity. Okay, so if we take this derivative and we have an unknown value. We'll do an example after this, but this is just purely mathematical at the moment. Uh, if we take the time rate of change of these two uh, values here, we end up having to use the chain rule. So we end up getting equals m v dot. m dot v plus v naught dot now it's important to note that when mass is flowing out of the body it's equivalent to the negative mass flow so um, m naught our initial mass flow or m dot naught, sorry, is equivalent to negative m dot. But that's depending on the direction of the mass flow. If the mass is flowing into it, then it's a positive mass flow. If the mass is flowing out, then it's a negative mass flow. But in dynamics questions, we deal with mass flowing out of the object or the uh, body. And the reason for that is because we're looking at things that are going to be in motion or that we want to put into motion. And we also know that the mass that flows out of the body may be considered by the relative velocity of the mass with respect to that body, or the mass flowing out with respect to that body. And this is represented mathematically by a new value, which is u, which represents the relative velocity of the mass, which is v minus v naught. <coughs> okay, logic, <coughs> logic also tells us that there can be no time rate of change of velocity considered initially since it has to be either constant or zero. And that's because there is no time component associated with initial velocity as t equals zero. And this can be related back to the equation v equals v naught plus at and this term is always going to be zero so when t equals zero our velocity is v naught but this 
is a constant. And what happens when you derive a constant? You end up getting zero. So v naught dot equals zero. And the other thing that we've that we've learnt before uh, previously is that our time rate of change of initial mass is equal to a negative mass or a mass flow out, which means that the the mass is going to decrease. So Looking back at our uh, force summation, we end up getting this equation here, which is the sum of the forces equals mv dot plus m dot v. And since v, uh, we'll write it, we'll write the whole thing out and then we'll cancel out terms where necessary. Because the V naught is zero, we can cancel this term out. And we know that this M dot naught is negative M dot. So this then becomes And we also can factorize this v minus v naught out because it has m dot as a common term. And that just becomes mv dot plus m dot u. Where the u, as we said before, was the relative velocity of the mass flowing out of the body. Alright, that's, that's all that's necessary for variable mass for now. I'm going to do an example after this. Uh, thanks for watching.